Dr. Lisa Barrett is an infectious diseases expert and researcher at Dalhousie University in Halifax. She is with me now. And Dr. Barrett, thanks again for uh, taking some time to discuss the latest COVID-19 developments. I do appreciate it. Oh, good afternoon. Let me start with the latest infection rates across the country and what appears to be in most places a moderating of the overall case numbers. That has a lot of people wondering about reopening. Uh, is that kind of talk premature still? Yeah, that, I mean, that's very premature. I think if there's one thing that people can take to the bank at this point is that these variants, for whatever reason, in whatever way, do move more easily, they're more transmittable, and they will take full advantage of any opportunity to spread again and quickly and without symptoms. And given that most provinces don't even test people without symptoms, it would be a disaster to open too quickly. Even though people are getting vaccinated and that does help, we really, really would be unwise, I think, to open things too quickly with these variants with only one dose of vaccine in only some people. Yeah, I mean, the Prime Minister did broadly talk about uh, reopening today and, and the requirement to get infections way down right across the country. Uh, he talked about more than 75% of Canadians needing to have received a first dose of vaccine. Uh, he's talking hopefully by perhaps the end of June. But until then, restrictions uh, need to stay in place to keep outbreaks under control. Do you agree with that? Uh, that s sort of broad approach where, in terms of vaccination, uh, up against restrictions? Absolutely. I mean, um, the, the vaccines are amazing. They're great. Um, they do prevent a significant amount of hospitalization and death, and that's an incredibly important thing that they do. But immunity is a sliding scale, and with these variants, um, the peak of immunity may not be quite as high, and therefore it really is important to get two doses of vaccine into people before they can be considered protected. And in addition to that, we really need to see the case numbers be very low and the community spread part, and this is very important, there needs to be enough testing being done to know if there's community spread. And if you still have unidentified cases with no known source in the community, don't open up yet. It's just not going to go well. Canada has been getting a steady supply of, uh, of Pfizer vaccines and, uh, and Moderna is expected to get back on track with deliveries. But there's lots of uncertainty around the AstraZeneca deliveries with uh, none in the immediate future. And Alberta has stopped giving AstraZeneca now as a first dose and will use whatever supplies it has left for second doses only because of supply concerns. Other provinces reconsidering the use of AstraZeneca because of concerns over the side effects. Uh, what do we know about mixing first and second doses of vaccine? Because that seems to be where a lot of the talk is headed. Yeah, there are multiple studies going on around the world to deliberately in a controlled clinical trial situation, look at that. And to be clear, the real science questions there are not whether it's particularly safe. It almost certainly is going to be safe. The real question there is, will it be as effective as using the same vaccine for first and second doses? And or will it be better? We've done this before with different kinds of vaccines, most notably in Canada, the pneumonia vaccines. We mix and match those for first and second doses. And so the real question is, will the clinical trials show a difference? Right now, best strategy is probably not to mix and match till we have those data. But if we had to, to get the second dose into people, it's not really safety that's the issue. It's just how well it works likely it's going to be pretty darn well, if not a little bit better. So that's that's a speculation part. Uh, and we hope not to have to speculate on a vaccine program uh, in Canada, but we'll see how that goes. Let me uh, draw that out a bit if I can. Uh, some experts suggesting the immune response, uh, I think you sort of touched on it, could be even stronger against the emerging variants by mixing vaccines. Um, without digging too much into the weeds for us lay people here, uh, how, how would that work? Why, why could the immune response actually be stronger okay so the first dose is your immune system getting an education and consider it maybe like a high school education um, you get lots of good knowledge your body responds better to to the to the virus if it sees it but the second dose can be like getting um, the first couple of years of your university degree 
And because you're not taking the same lecture over and over, if you mix and match, so to speak, you'd be giving a different lecture. So you get broader coverage of the knowledge, so to speak, uh, with the second dose being different. Uh, that may be why the immune system may be even stronger after if you give a different type of second dose. And that's kind of what we do with pneumonia. We give that first shot and then we provide a second shot that has broader coverage, slightly different coverage, so you don't get exactly the same lecture, if you will, over and over again. So that's the way I think of it. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a wonderful uh, comparison. There, there are, look, uh, there's also provinces right now, I touched on it earlier, engaged in uh, discussions about whether to suspend the use of the AstraZeneca vaccine in favor of one of the other vaccines because of those potential side effects Canadians have heard about. Now, if I've uh, have had the AstraZeneca vaccine, as I have. I've had that as my first dose. Uh, what are the potential risks if I get a second dose of AstraZeneca uh, and I'm offered that as opposed to the, the idea of vaccine mixing? Right. So the, um, the special type of blood clot associated with AstraZeneca is an immune response that your body has. And while we can't definitively say that it never happens after a second dose, if it hasn't happened after the first dose, it is much less likely to happen after a second dose. So that very, very rare side effect becomes even rarer in terms of thinking about the second dose. And so if people have access to their second dose, and that's going to give them, if you will, that university level education for their immune system, I would suggest especially if you had no difficulties with the first dose, that that's a very, very safe and reasonable thing to do. Um, but the other part is I always tell people, be informed and educated about what the signs and symptoms are that you're looking for. Rash, headache, change in vision, sudden shortness of breath. Make sure you watch out for those things for a few days after the vaccine for four to 16 days. Um, not because you want to increase your anxiety, but because you want to be aware and prepared because this is a treatable side effect if found early as well. All right, uh, just in the last uh, less than a minute or so we have left, uh, give me your thoughts on where you think we are here. Uh, as you look down the road, uh, how much optimism are you feeling? How much concern are you feeling? I love the fact that we're getting further and further ahead with vaccines. That's going to be very important as we go forward. I mentioned earlier that vaccines aren't perfect for preventing all infection as we go forward, but they are certainly very good at preventing disastrous illness. And that's very important. Combine some vaccines with what I hope is going to be a better testing strategy across the country. Putting those two hand in hand, I hope we're going to get towards the fall part of the year with a very vaccinated, very protected population that know how to get tested and we can start to think about real and meaningful opening up. Uh, but I hope folks don't go down that road too fast or I suspect we're going to be doing this wave thing for a little while longer. All right. Uh, thanks so much for your time again tonight, Dr. Lisa Barrett. Uh, always great to talk to you. Uh, appreciate it. Take care. Thank you.